What's up, James? How's it going, man? How you doing? Nice, nice. Hope you're enjoying your time with the family. What's up, Paint Slinger? Is it better or easier to stand than sit or brushing? Makes it easier to get smooth lines for sure. It's right, Mike, get your money. This is actually a painting for myself. So if you don't follow me on social media uh, my cat passed away um, a few days ago now and I've uh, just kind of been missing my little guy you know so I'm making this painting and I waited to today because I thought I could make it without fucking getting emotional bro but you already just reminded me like no this is not why I'm doing that like come on This was my cat for eight years. He's eight years old. He passed away. Uh, and he's kind of the cat that sat on my lap as I did uh, video edits to the channel. And, and just, you know, he was closely tied to the channel being what it is today. And, uh, yeah. It's been rough the last few days without him just walking around meowing and doing his thing. And, I, you know, felt it. The other animals in the house have felt it and they've been sad. And I just wanted to paint something to kind of put up to commemorate my friend. So that's what I'm here doing today. No money involved, nothing like that. I mean, and even when I do RIP portraits for people, like, it feels rough having to charge them, you know, but at the same time, sometimes it's like, you gotta, you know, time and materials are not free. It's rough, bro, it's rough all the way around. It's more rough when it's somebody you know, or some, your animal, or your, your, your family member, you know, in any kind of way. And Felix was like family, bro, so. Just making sure to make a nice little painting of him to put up. Thanks, David. Mm 
and so I'm starting off by doing the background. <clears throat> I started off by sketching him, and then I laid some white over the pencil. And then uh, I started with a little bit of opaque light blue and just kind of laying some strokes in around for the background. I'm going to add a little bit of dark blue and go back and kind of reinforce my strokes. And then I'm going to add some green and we're going to kind of make the background just kind of a nice, uh, like a nice aura around them, you know, so that's all I'm going for right now. Uh, what's up, Jesse? And then we're going to start layering him in once we get all this background finished. Seventeen-year-old cat, dang man, that's that's an old cat. Ah. Thank you, thank you, Ruben. Yeah, you know, it just it just happens, I guess. He's the first pet that's passed away since I came back to Colorado. Um, he was only eight years old, so we weren't expecting him to pass or nothing like that. But he'd been sick for a while. Um, he just kind of having issues, but then he got really sick. And, uh, you know, right away when we noticed, we started trying to give him fluids and trying to take care of him and stuff. And it just wasn't enough, man. He was just... We could even get him to the vet, like he was on the ground, just not moving. And we were there for them until the end, so it was just nothing you can do now besides miss the guy and uh, just try to remember him. You know, he was a nice little cat through all my struggles and stuff that happened here he is kind of there you know so it's like that thing just like if it was my dog just like if it was anything it's my cat and he's there and I hurt my and my hip my whole episode of my hip like he was there just keeping me warm meowing in my face making sure I was smiling and stuff and Ain't nothing like what a pet can do when you're down, so.
What's up, Stephen Ward? How's it going? How's things down under? Mm. I can't even keep my voice together, bro. That's pretty good background. Wow, it looks <laughs> it looks crazy different on the camera. Thanks, Stephen Ward. Violet has a loose tooth. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> in typical fashion the green doesn't show up very good, so let's try this Does it show up on that camera nope oh, well I'll just keep it on that one of the guy and we're gonna start probably around his eyes just because we already have like some green in here and I just need to lay in some kind of green undertones with some yellow and then we can start mixing up some fur colors. Actually, maybe I should switch it to this one. Just to bring you guys in close. Thanks, Heather. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> now all I 
gotta do is try to make the little guy justice and make sure he lives on forever in a nice painting right here. And I think we'll go through the whole process here on camera, so I'm gonna show everything. The fur, all the way, I'll even clear coat it on camera here because I want to put it in the house ASAP. So the, the sooner I put some clear on it, the sooner I could hang it up in the house. So. That's where I'm at with this. So he had like, uh, what's the word? They were not green. They were like yellow green eyes. So that's kind of what I'm trying to build up here. Switch off this airbrush. Put this on the side. Ever since Createx sent me this uh, illustration set, and it's all the packs, I've gotten pretty used to using it, and it um, makes it really easy to get cool little effects like this in the eye. You lay undertone, then you come back in with a nice opaque color that's going to go over right away, and you can lay some textures using colors. color mixing probably so bear with me so I'm mixing up another yellow just adding some white into this yellow to make it nice and more pastel like
last but not least, just a little bit of pretty much white tinted with some yellow. as well do the black so we can start working our way around with the black as it is too it's, it's going to be like an undertone Okay, Jose. Oh, oh, get wrecked, kid. <laughs> and normally, I wouldn't even care. But don't do it on the video of my cat. It's like you could screw off. People wonder why I do like 
members only live streams and it's like uh Watching from Milan, Italy. Nice, nice. That's cool. So all I'm going to start doing is working my way around with the black. We're going to use the black as an undertone. Then I'm going to come back with some gray and then some like light tan and then some really extremely light gray to finish him up because um, he was just mainly gray, black and white. So. And we're going to stroke it all in all little by little like this. Do all his fur going around. I'm just 
trying to make sure I got my lines right here. Only problems I can't tell if it's focused. Okay, no, it's not focused. Good. I think I'm actually, I'm going to do like probably half of his face here and then I'm going to mix up the gray so I can start laying her that in too. Um, that way when I kind of sit on the stool and then when I sit on the floor or if I move to another area, I won't have to move back. So I'm trying to get them done section by section kind of, I think it'll be a lot better. How's my back going? 
It's going, I'm standing. We'll see how long I last, to be honest. That's kind of the whole point of this though, is to try to keep it up. Try to keep myself up. Thanks for asking us, Steven. <laughs> for real. We'll see how long I last. So let me just finish up this little area right here and then I'll switch off to some gray. And we'll kind of finish up his face here. Try to get all the colors I need mixed up so that as I go along I can kind of just switch off the airbrush I need and keep on from there. Coming less. Right on, Bob. Thank you, thank you, sir. say thank you it's like thank you for your condolences but there's I didn't win anything or anything that's probably the worst I'm not sure how to reply to that <laughs> when somebody says sorry for your loss I'm not sure what to say <laughs> sure what kind of cat he was if I'm gonna be honest with you he was a nice cat that's all I know <laughs> he was really soft really fluffy and uh, he was 
It's pretty cool. Pretty cool cat. registered kind of cat or nothing. That doesn't make him any less cool though. But yeah, I think, um, I'm not sure. Not exactly sure what tabby cats are, but he had like all the markings of a certain kind of cat. It might have been tabby cat? I'm not sure. I'm not a, a cat expert. a gray and white striped cat he had stripes like a tiger but he had white all over him but anywhere he had gray he had black stripes he was a cool looking cat man unfortunately he didn't like like his this is the only picture we found of him where he's just sitting normally <laughs> He was one of those cats that liked to like just lay on his back all the time or he'd be like doing weird stuff um, like sneaking up on you around walls and stuff like that. So it was actually hard to find a, a decent picture of him and this is about the best. He's always up to something man. Cats are they always up with something. Start layering that gray and it starts looking a little better. Then we're gonna lay in a little bit of light light tan. See how it just kind of really as he got older it started coming in like on some of his white fur and, and gray fur he started getting like a tan kind of coming in He's a proper dick, but love him all. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Felix used to like to attack our feet when we were trying to sleep. He had a thing for attacking feet. Um, he had certain spots around the house that was like there was that was his spot. And if you were sitting there or happened to be in that area, he just would not care, and he'd just go and sit on you if that was the thing or you know, poke at you till you moved out of the way so you could sit where you wanted to sit, that kind of stuff. He was a little bit of an asshole, I'm not gonna lie. 
He was my asshole, man. Honestly, though, I, I've had, in my lifetime, I've had some demon cats, like, cats that I just, I, they were just too much. I couldn't take care of them. There were, there were cats that were just, uh, the best way I could describe them is demon cats, because they would just tear everything up, like, everything. It was just nonstop action, and they just needed uh, constant attention. Certain cats, though, have been great. Um, Felix is one of them. And like I said, since I moved here to Colorado, um, or back to Colorado, uh, what's 11 years ago now? He's the first pet that I've that's passed. So, kind of a sad. under control. Um, we got him as a kitten. So, <laughs> funny story of how we got Felix, right? So, um, we we were just, I wanted a cat. So, we started searching for cats and stuff. And we actually ended up getting him off of Craigslist. Again, this is eight, eight years ago. Craigslist was popping back then. Craigslist has pretty much died in my area. Um, I don't know where you live. It might still be good. But where I live, it's it's pretty much a dead, dead in the water. You know, there's not very many posts or anything like that. But back then, it, it was doing really good. But there was a lot of posts for kittens, right? So I start calling around and stuff. Eventually, we find a, a little old lady, and she says she has kittens, and we could go and pick one out, and it'd be fifteen dollars for him. I was like, fifteen dollars. All right, let's let's do this, right? <laughs> of course. Um, so we go out to this lady's house, and this lady did not just have kittens; like she had all the kittens, every single one of the kittens, all of them. And um, there was there was at least fifteen kittens, my guy. And then there was cats, like everywhere. And she said that she used to just take care of the alley cats. Um, and that they got so friendly with her that she just started bringing them in and they were they were really nice friendly cats like none of them looked all ugly or anything anymore like because they she had taken them in and was taking care of them well felix she said was one of the like her original cats as babies so i don't i don't i think he was a mix between like an alley cat and a domestic cat i don't know but when we got him, he was little baby, man. I could hold him like this, like he was little, little. And uh, yeah, he just started growing. And he was the only cat for a long time. And he started getting along with the dogs. So much so that he started acting like the dogs. Like you would call the dogs over and he would come. Stuff like that. 
Um, he started panting. You know how like dogs pant when they're like you know hot. <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. Um, he started doing that, like walking around. And um, yeah, he he was doing some funny stuff there for a minute. Just I'm not sure if he thought he was a dog or whatever, but he felt at home. Dogs accepted him. He's just chill. And then, yeah, we got um, our second cat for him because after a while there, uh, so now around our house, there's a bunch of alley cats. And so Felix started kind of noticing that he was not one of the dogs. And what were these creatures outside that were like him and stuff? And so then we wanted to get him a friend and we got him a friend. And yeah, and he he's kind of gave up on the dogs after that. But yeah, like that that's the story of Felix. He was he came in, he was just kind of like his own his own little thing. Yeah, he, a lot of things happen with this cat. And so a lot of times too, like when, again, if you're not on the Discord, if you want to chat with me and the rest of the Airbrush community, like the actual users, not like a face or face, <laughs> Facebook really, not like the YouTube comments or whatever, but like if you just actual artist, you want to be able to post your pictures and stuff, go down in the description. There's a little link that says Discord community down there. Make sure you're showing the Discord and um, yeah. And that made me forget what the hell I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I just, I, I, I lost track of what I was saying. Somebody can remind me. I don't know. I was going somewhere with that. I was telling you to join the Discord for a reason, but now I just don't know why. Obviously join the Discord just so that you could uh, be a part of the community. I totally completely forgot what I was saying. It's kind of been like that since a couple, few days now. I've, I've just had trouble focusing. Just so. Sorry, I, I'm, I just don't know. I'm trying to think of what I was saying, but I don't, I can't honestly can't. <laughs> I just can't. Thanks, Dennis, man. Yeah, dude, it was awesome when, when he was acting like a cat, it was, I mean like a dog, it was the funniest period of his life and he, like yeah, I would call the dogs, you know, to take the dogs out and stuff, he'd come running along and, you know, it, it was quite interesting to see him do everything with the dogs and he laid with the dogs, like slept with them and, yeah. I remember one time Tika, our bulldog, um, gave him a bath basically. We got home from being out and get home and Felix is covered in slobber. And Tika is just sitting there licking away at him and he's just purring away. Completely covered and just drool, just blah. Tika just drool so much, but it's like she had just gotten finished drinking water or something and completely covered him in drool 
it, it was hilarious and, and kind of gross at the same time. And he's just sitting there loving it. So we have some black here on his nose, but we're gonna come back and do the pink because his nose is pink. And uh, once we do that tan too, the tan is kind of, the fur, the tan fur came in on his chin and like kind of around his eyes and a little bit on top of his nose. So, Cause he was bright white when we got him. He didn't, <laughs> he, yeah. Just like our dog Chunk, right all along his face, he's kind of starting to grow white hairs all around. <laughs> and we just say he's an old man now. It's his chin, his whole front of his face is covered with a little white fuzz. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Is the music too loud? It's a little bit louder than normal, but the microphone's farther away from the speakers, so I don't know if it makes any difference. Hopefully we'll be getting a new microphone for the whole setup here soon. Yeah, I, I do have a lot of like, nice memories with Felix, and that's kind of why I want to make sure I get a nice painting of him. And, you know, make him kind of part of the house like he was, because he, he really was. This was like his house, man. He just, he ran the house. Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for the sound check. I, I appreciate when you guys re reply to my questions. <laughs> for real. Sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to nothing. Um. But here, let's switch up the music anyway, because. I wish we could just play like regular music on here. To be quite honest with you, <laughs> I wish I could just be jamming to what I want to listen to right now, like some Prodigy or, or just anything else. Something kind of uplifting would be good right now, or something kind of just break shit would be good right now. So yeah, well, what, Mike, why don't you dedicate yourself to just painting animals all the time? <laughs> it's like my friend, I like to stroke it, but not that much. <laughs> I do want to get into painting some more animals though, but I don't know if I, like if this is all the orders I always got, I don't know how long I, I would survive. <laughs> this is my finger, my guy, I would just, I don't know. 
my finger would be illin all the time. It would just be hurting. I'm glad. I'm glad that I only once in a while I'll get a customer that wants their pet, you know, and it's usually a dog. Sometimes a couple horses, that kind of stuff. But luckily, I don't get too many like, oh, here's my cat, or here's, you know, too many of those. Cause yeah, doing this fur like this, it sounds great. <laughs> but yeah, we're just getting started too. I just have to do the tan and then come back and maybe do some white highlights. Do the white fur, whiskers, all that great jazz. Anyway, how's everybody been? I hope everybody's been keeping safe during these crazy times. I hope nobody's gotten sick. Perfect. Um, so for something like this, uh, this canvas is a 24 by 30. Um, you're probably looking at like 250 bucks, something like that. Something around those lines. Thanks, Stephen Ward. Dang, you're getting your vaccines already? How are you getting a vaccine? I want vaccine. What the hell? Oh, man. That ain't, that ain't right. That ain't right at all. I want my vaccine as well. <laughs> Yeah. 
And I know it would just be nice to get the vaccine and be able to just be around people again without wearing so much. I'd still wear a mask and everything, but dang, I just <sighs> around my area there were just way too many people that don't give a fuck about wearing masks. It just makes it hard to even want to be out. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I use my lungs every day. Um, more importantly, I paint a lot. My lungs are probably already not in the best of shape, not gonna lie. You know? Now, do I want to <laughs> extend the damage by just, you know, no, like, nah, nothing. I'm good. I'll, I can wait. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly it. Oh, so, well, at least you could get the vaccine early. I just wish more people would actually just listen for once. And yeah, I've been, since basically March of last year, I've been stuck in the house. Uh, I've gone out to paint for people like less than five times yeah about like four times since in the past year I've actually gone out to paint somewhere else in the last ten years of uh, being here that is usually how we make our money I paint at events, I paint at parties, I, you know, do painting at other people's shops, you name it. Right? But a lot of it involves around going to somebody else's place or somewhere else. So, um, yeah, it's no fun at all. I've been stuck inside. My money's been cut by a lot. Luckily, we, I mean, luckily, and I say luckily, like I'm super lucky, honestly, to have you guys in the community, to, and YouTube kind of did that, that partner program for the channel with us, and it's a stroke of luck, all of it was a stroke of luck, Createx, you know, all kind of helped the channel. Like, I was not lying when I did that stream and I was just talking about, like, hey, if we can't get canvases and and all this, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, you know, you guys stepped up. You know, one of the best ones was, I believe, James sent us canvases and, and toilet paper and stuff and a funny note. And, you know, that's kind of when I knew. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to go out and paint. But everybody could still watch me paint online. And I need to take this opportunity and just kind of do as much as I can with it. And Createx reached out and, and it all kind of worked out in the end. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure how we would have done if, if all that stuff, like the stars wouldn't aligned.
luckily they all did align and, and we're still here we're still streaming right but there was a really good chance there was no gonna be no stream there's not gonna be no no more airbrush videos for a while or at least they were gonna be really rare you know because I wasn't gonna have the money or anything to be able to make the videos so yeah that's why I constantly say thank you to you guys in all the videos and I'm constantly thanking you guys for all the support it's because literally like you guys made 2020 like happen it's not nothing I did nothing is really through the work of you guys and that's kind of where I'm at had a better year than I did last year because <laughs> you know even though we got through like the, not gonna lie and say it was all amazing because it, it really wasn't there was some times there where it, just, it was rough and a lot of things happened last year it was just weird all these circumstances Restaurants in St. Louis are reopening and there seems to be a rejuvenated spirit. Yeah, I mean, that's all we can hope for here is that stuff kind of starts reopening. I know they kind of upped the capacity on some of the stuff. And My thing, though, is I don't want to go somewhere and then freaking end up getting sick again. Like, right? Like, that defeats the whole purpose of reopening if... Everybody just starts getting sick again. Tom, Tom Van, Tom Van Der, Der Weyland. I hope I'm pronouncing that way. How we go in the second winter? It's gonna be winter where you are now. What? It's it's starting to turn spring where I am. Means uh, I always Stephen Ward, man, you, your world fascinates me. Australia is definitely a place I'm going to have to visit sometime. I honestly wish I just had an excuse to go there now. Get away for a while. Take the family with me and... Oh, but then we just have to figure out something to do with the dogs while we were gone and stuff. It would be hard. It sounds so easy. I'm just going to go. All right, now before I go too far, let me mix up some tan so that we can lay the tan in there. You wouldn't be where you're at without my videos and teaching. I can't, I can't say that, I can't take you know, I can't take credit for that because there's no talent, bro. Like, you might have just had it in you the whole time. But, you know, I know te having someone teach you helps and stuff. But I do appreciate that, James. I appreciate, like, again, all the support. And, yeah, that was that was amazing when we got those canvases and stuff. And we, we were laughing at the toilet paper. and.
do with the lid? I know I had the lid. Oh, there it is. As it flies halfway across the room. It does look like him already. So let's finish up his face here and then we can kind of go back and do a kind of a quick little pass with the black again.
I started a, a journey a year ago, and honestly, your teaching is what brought me to where I am airbrushing, so I agree with James. Oh, thanks, Heather. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you guys are doing great with your airbrushing. That's awesome. You've been watching Mike for a few years, and it's most likely... <laughs> I, I guess I'm rubbing off on you guys, huh? I just look back at some of my work from then to now. It blows my mind on how much progress I made. I know. that That's always something I get from the Discord is just looking at you guys. And a lot of times it's just from post to post. And I'll be like, wow, like, where did whose video did he watch? Or what did he do that all of a sudden his work is like that much better? Or her work is that much better? You know, so a lot of times, yeah, you guys, man, it, it surprises me. You guys really, it, I mean, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't be that surprised. I don't know. I, I got to say, I'm just proud of you guys. That's what I'm going to say. Talking to the chat. Yeah. Harry, this is about bringing this burrito to the church. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, thank you. Give me a kiss. My feet are frozen being out here. <laughs> <laughs> What's your mom saying? We're watching the movie. Oh, okay. face is always the hardest part and then as we move on like a lot of his body is white so we won't have to do that many um, layers you know because it'll just probably just be a, a layer of really light white and a layer of bright white over it but uh, his face right the whole thing is that we have to make it look like Felix it wouldn't just be right if it was just a, a cat that looked like him no, no, no. it has to be him like that's the whole thing right so that's that's kind of what I'm working on right here and you can hear my wife already came in and said oh it's it's looking good it's looking just like him so what's up sticky art thank you Mark Werner how's it going Rogelio Luna how's it going Good luck to you, sir, on your airbrushing. Yeah, the, I used to be like that, too. And honestly, I, I don't know. If you don't feel comfortable, I just wouldn't do it. Right? But sometimes hearing a little bit of uh, critique and or praise, because you, know, you don't ever know what you're going to get, right? But hearing it from other artists, like in the Discord... It's probably a lot better than hearing it just from, you know, somebody who doesn't know. And family is deceiving because family will lead you on sometimes. And friends will lead you on. Um, you know, and, and not in a good way lead you on. So sometimes it can be a little difficult to know where exactly your skill stands. And sometimes those some of those people that are the most critical of themselves are usually the ones that are wow you're doing really good why are you worried <laughs> you know that kind of thing so i've seen your work your work is pretty good so i don't know but yeah the, the whole thing is that how do you know your work is good unless somebody else tells you it's good and that was my whole thing, right, when I started airbrushing, is that I kind of already knew it from the get-go that I didn't want to rely on my family, like, to get um, approval of what I was doing. Like, I didn't need them to be like, yeah, it looks good. 
or no, it doesn't look good. Because no matter what I did, it seemed like they were just like, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> you know, so I, I needed to get honest opinions. And that's kind of what, when I started painting, um, it was really nice to just hear people say that they did like it and that I was doing amazing and that I was fast. And these are people that I've never, ever met before, just random people, you know. And then once people were willing to spend money on it, that's kind of when I knew. I was like, okay, well, it's... Even if it's bad, you know, even if I don't think it's the greatest, obviously they, they're satisfied enough with it, right? Like, that's, let's build on that. So let's start building and working towards my goals from there. That's why I encourage people, like, you know, if you're an artist, like, when I was in my... Well, I'll, what I'll call my prime painting years, like from from 19 to 20, what, seven, 24, something like, like some around those ages, the good golden years when I was really young, really fast, and I could just, I didn't care. Like I had no care in the world. And I think that's kind of why I was also um, good is because I didn't care. Once I learned I didn't care. I stopped picking up the magazines. I stopped reading about other artists. And I stopped, you know, I just stopped trying to um, imitate or trying to be like what I other artists were seeing. And at that point, it was just more about like, hey, I'm painting. Let's just keep painting and whatever the customer wants. And that's what I was painting. And I stopped worrying about making it look a certain way or or thinking that it needed to look a certain way or anything like that. And I was just painting for the customer. And that's kind of where I took um, the most influence from is from painting from real people. And that's kind of why I'm, you know, I'm not like a one trick pony, right? I don't just sit here and, and paint um, skulls all day. I don't just sit here and paint like low rider art all day or or whatever you know just not on one subject all the time is because um you know basically people would always come with different things whether it be in their pet you know that just passed away or their family member or their car that you know just got wrecked and they just want to have a shirt with their car you know whatever it was or you know whether it was just a shirt for a fight you know like it's whatever just whatever came my way I was there to be like yeah let's do it let's make it the best you know the best the best the best best and that's kind of where I was just at I was just trying to paint everything a little bit better every time and going from there and then um you know not nothing political or nothing but around when Bush got reelected, right <laughs> when he got reelected, um I could personally say the economy just, it crashed for me. I went from airbrushing at the markets and making all kinds of money to making like nothing and trying to figure out how I was going to, that was another tough time. Just like we had the, the tough time this last year, but that was intense. Um, I, I was literally like having, I resorted to like living on people's couches and staying and I never gave up the dream right I was still airbrushing I was still trying how I you know, wherever I could find work painting I was still doing it I was still doing the markets and um, that's kind of how I ended up in Houston it was just trying to find work and yeah went to Houston did a bunch of work there working with sleek at the airbrush store and had a lot of fun there but you know, I'm not from Houston, um, uh, and it's quite obvious. Like, I'm, it's like not like, uh, you know, like I stick out. <laughs> I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Is I kind of stick out a little bit. I don't know. So I just never felt completely at home there. Like I'll just be honest with you. It just, and I just always wanted to come back. And then when I had a chance to be with my wife I took the chance obviously we, we weren't married right off the bat you know I came here to kind of be with her and I just never want to leave her so if she doesn't want to leave this place that's kind of where we're at 
luckily lately she's kind of been opening to the idea of maybe moving you know once not anytime soon obviously but you know maybe in the future so who knows who knows what the future will bring I just know it's, it was I lived a really rough airbrush life it, it was I, well I shouldn't say that I've lived a exciting airbrush life there was times when it was good like the learning times right I was still kind of I was airbrushing at the markets and stuff but I would still go and pick up like an airbrush action magazine every now and then and see what the other airbrush artists were doing and you know do the tutorial at home whatever the tutorial inside the magazine was like the, the clown with the flames and and all those tutorials right and then after a while I just I stopped I stopped doing that and I just started painting and that's what it was all about it was just painting I didn't have time to grab a magazine and nothing like that and times was rough there for a while but the, I mean, before times were rough before Bush got reelected like during the time all the four years of his first term and before that like man I was we were doing pretty good that's all I'm gonna say and hopefully we can make those times happen again um, as soon as this virus stuff is over and places start reopening again that's really all I can hope for at this point is hopefully we can do it again and I can take you guys along and show you guys how to do it because honestly I don't want to be painting at markets all through my you know 40s and 50s and stuff so hopefully one of you guys will be able to just like take the mantle and and I'll see more of you guys around when when I go places there'll be more airbrush artists at markets or at events and, and just in general you know hopefully you guys are, are take my knowledge and run with it and that's what it's all about Ugh. Uh, doing Felix proud. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's looking really good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it so far. It does look like him. I think I got his eyes like pretty spot on. And once we add some highlights, you know, to um, simulate the glare and stuff, it's really gonna look good. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Um, 30 plus years with Prismacolor to airbrush, from color pencils to airbrush. Oh man. Come to Australia. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to have to visit Australia. And then Australia might be where I end up, like, you know, once we're 50-something. Uh, you know, it sounds like an amazing place. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't traveled all the world. But I, Australia sounds hella interesting. For sure. I'm still doing hundreds of dots, loops, etc. Yeah, man. I'm. People think I'm playing when I say I used to practice, like, a good eight hours a day living with my brother right at the time here in Colorado Springs and um, that's basically all I had I didn't have a PlayStation or Nintendo or anything like that I had a compressor and an airbrush and a dream and, and that's kind of what I did and I tried my best to make it happen I made it happen and you know Honestly, I probably would have lived a better life if I would have listened to people and, and, you know, maybe joined the military like I was supposed to. And who knows with these hands, what what I've been doing. <laughs> well, like, like I wanted to, right? Because that was my plan was we were living down in El Paso. There really is not much opportunity other than the military. So that was my plan. It was like my brother went into the Air Force. I'm going to probably do the Air Force and we're gonna go from there like but then my brother was like nah don't do that you could spend four years of your life doing something better I I don't know man I don't know life has been crazy it's just crazy to think about life and that's all I can say at this point is like life has been crazy
But yeah, I mean, I'm just here today painting. Um, you know, obviously I left the chat open so that you guys can all join in on the chat today. It's kind of helping. It's helping. Just kind of vent off to you guys this is good. And that's kind of that's kind of the whole thing I'm talking about. I'm just lucky to have you guys and that whole support you guys show. It just it, it goes a long way. So I'm, I'm glad you guys learn and I'm glad you guys appreciate the information but at the same time know that it goes both ways and, and you guys are kind of there for me too and I appreciate all the support and that's why I constantly say that stuff and I hate, I feel like I'm just getting too much into my emotions I almost, I just want to shut up, stop talking, I just want to put the music on and just paint. She also brought me a burrito, I should take a couple bites of this. Got to take an ibuprofen for the back. <sighs> yeah, Heather, please start start posting them. It's, you know, I'm not saying flood the Discord with nothing but your stuff, but like once in a while. Just post one of your things that you're working on. Doesn't even have to be finished. You know? Technically nothing is ever finished. You could always add. Add to anything. Yeah, for sure you gotta make your own path. Everybody's path is different. It just kills me sometimes, man. Just knowing all the work I've done, all the stuff I had to do. To get to now, and sometimes I see people who just come in and either try to tear me down, or like that guy earlier, they just try to promote their stuff. And it's like I get it, right? You want to get people on your eyes on your stuff, but like, they also just, at the same time you're kind of taking a poop on my stuff by coming in here and not even introducing yourself or anything, just being like, oh, I'm an airbrush artist, blah, 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 LA, blah, 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 come check out my channel. It's like, bro. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if people actually take those comments like that serious or not, but when you do stuff like that, it just makes me not even wanna, not even wanna help you, my guy. Is that, again, I do have the Discord, and we have a channel in there. If you make videos, or if you want, if you see a video that you want to share with the community, we have a channel just for that. And literally, I'm the only one that posts videos in there because I don't know why. I have it open so that anybody could post videos about anybody or anything, right? As long as it has to do with airbrushing, obviously. But if like. If you have a channel and you want to get some views, like join the Discord, introduce yourself, introduce your channel, maybe post a video or two. You know, I'm not saying flood the Discord with your stuff, but like just being a real person coming in there and talking is probably going to go a lot further than spamming, hey, I'm airbrush, YouTube, blah, you know. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Ward, dude, your your potters, dude, are are getting pretty good. That one you did with all them was it like the simulated stones? Like I literally sat there and looked at that for like thirty minutes, and I was just like, did he really tape all those off? I was just like, no way! Like that's a lot of work for a little potter. It's like wow, I just so big ups to you on that one, my friend. I literally I sat there for a long time and was just looking at your your potter, just going like wow, like this guy really went all the way. You shaded each one individually, like trust, trust. I know and I notice stuff like that. I know what, how much work that takes. So 
Yeah. You need to get some stencils once I feel I'm ready for it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely stencils help a lot depending on what you're painting. So I'm just moving down with the gray, starting to go down into his chest a little bit. And um, like I said, a lot of this white area will just be a stroke of gray. And then I'll probably leave it as I do all the black and gray around his body. But then I'm gonna come back at the very end and we're gonna do white. Um, obviously he's, you know, he has white highlights all over his body. So we're gonna come back at the very end and do all those. You see along the edge here, I'm just laying some gray so that when I come back with the white, we could cut in white and go beyond the gray and onto the blue, but you'll see the white the whole way through. So it's using the gray again as an undertone so that when we lay our white, our white pops, right? So that's kind of what I'm, all I'm doing right now is just kind of laying in the shadow for the fur, but the fur itself is obviously white and that's what we're gonna come back and do. Yeah, you started working for yourself two and a half years ago. Yeah, it's it, whenever you go self-employed or you open a business or anything, um, you better be prepared. Again, I've been doing the airbrushing as a business since basically the age of 14. And I can tell you right now that even, even if I had everything planned, um, there's things I could not have seen or circumstances out of my control. And even if I would have thrown all the money at it, um, probably stuff wouldn't have changed. You know, like there was nothing I could do to when I was had my shop at the Westminster Mall. There was literally nothing I could do within my power to stop the mall from failing right and the mall was demolished and and it's not there anymore but there was nothing I could do to stop that like this it's just death of a mall and that shop lasted a good two years and it I mean I was doing great the, you know but apparently it, the whole mall itself was not doing so great. Again, nothing I could do, nothing my fault. I was making enough to keep the bills and and everything, but you know, just how it goes. And then we got the shaft into the stick. The owner promised us all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we're gonna close the mall, but you get a new spa, blah blah blah. Then none of that ever happened. And to this day. Well, the last time I checked, I, hadn't, I shouldn't say to this day because I haven't checked. And the last time I went in that area, there still wasn't a mall and there was just a uh, two buildings. One where the J.C. Penney used to be and one where the Dillers used to be. But the whole mall structure was taken away. But apparently J.C. Penney and Dillards owned their buildings and they weren't actually part of the mall. And so those were left standing one had a for rent sign and yeah <laughs> that's
There was like there's literally nothing I could have ever done to stop that place from going under. Same thing as you know when it's like okay that place closed down so I opened up my shop back up at the market and was doing the market again and then nothing would have told me that a year later sales would have tanked you know as soon as the president got reelected and I couldn't tell you why sales tanked I, I don't know I just know they did and there was nothing I could do I tried everything in my power to try to get sales and reduce the prices and special deals and try to do everything I could to get people in and just none of that ever worked but then you know again a couple years after that went back and was just like I wonder if the market's doing any good and went back and made a good decent amount of money in a couple days right so I don't know it's just kind of weird the market changes, fluctuates, there's stuff out of your control no matter what. One thing I do know now, to do now, that I did not know back then, that I'll recommend to anybody, is save. Like, save within reason. Obviously, don't hoard money, right? If you have a ton of money, you should probably reinvest it back into your business. But maybe you should have a little bit of money just in case. Rainy day, put it away. You never know, you might need it. And back then I did not think like that, and that's kind of why I ended up where I ended up. Can't blame it on anybody else besides myself. And, you know, yeah. That's just the way the cookie crumbled. And I know I'm not the only one. I've seen other artists that, you know, they had a really big name. I wasn't even in magazines or nothing, but I know artists that were in magazines and stuff. And for a while, their stuff was really rough for some of them. And that's just the way it was. I never understood why Airbrush Action Magazine never just went digital. It just made sense to me, you know, like. Right now, they could have had a Facebook page and just, you know, been doing stuff or a website. Like those magazines already had so many ads. You were already selling in the ads. You could have just sold the ads for your website. You'd have been making bank till today. Now I know today there's that airbrush step by step magazine or something. Mm. <clears throat> but I don't know. It just doesn't seem as cool as the airbrush action magazine always was. Sorry guys, I'm just eat, trying to finish my burrito real quick before it gets really cold. <clears throat> so yeah, as a airbrush business guy that's been around for a while always innovate right so no matter where you're airbrushing or what you're doing always change your designs you gotta keep fresh designs keep in line with what's you know trendy and popping save and reinvest right always put more money back into your business And I know that now, and it might just be wisdom from being older, from having done all the stuff I did. Feeling like I worked and worked and worked and worked, like I didn't have anything to show for it. Mm. 
You don't want to feel like that. Save. Reinvest. Good luck. <clears throat> also, don't ever come into this business thinking you're going to make it. Don't ever think you're going to come into this business and make it. You should just assume you're not going to make it. And you should be okay with that. That's also something I had troubles with. Now, you know how much I airbrushed and airbrushed and airbrushed and I... There came a time when I realized that I airbrushed more than some of the people in the magazines. Some people airbrushed for the camera and I airbrushed for a living and that's just the way it was. So yeah. You should come in knowing you're not going to make it and don't ever expect to make it. And if you make it, it should be a surprise because honestly, you're not even going to know when you make it. You're not going to realize all of a sudden you're going to feel like you accomplished something. I feel like I accomplished something now that I have all you guys, you know, kind of telling me stuff. And, you know, just from being around. But for a while there, honestly, I was perfectly fine with being a nobody and just painting. And that was more important to me was just that I was painting. And that's all I cared about was just painting. And that's all you should care about. I stopped caring about the magazines. I stopped caring about trying to make videos or anything like that. And... It's just like a thing. You should just be happy to paint. And I was just happy to paint. And I was being paid to paint. And it was nice. That's all I could say. I hope you guys are the same. So I'm just going to start doing the lower body. Kind of sat down. On a stool now. Kind of got his back leg just barely showing a little bit. And I'm just gonna kind of very gently stroke it in there. It's just gray and a little bit of black. And it's kind of in the back, so it's kind of fuzzy. But we are gonna give it some nice little. little fur fuzz going all around Let's see here there you go looks good Yeah, I just, it's, it's been amazing to see just everything happen in the airbrushing world over the, you know, last however long years, decades, a couple of decades. Um, I've seen a lot of things kind of come and go. 
You know, it was one thing I was remembering the other day, and speaking of Airbrush X Magazine, one thing I always wanted to get my hands on was one of those silent air compressors um, that, what was that artist's name that promoted him so much? He was in all their ads standing next. I think he might have owned the company or something. Later, Heather. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it'll be here. We'll, we'll leave the replay up. I'm also probably going to make a time lapse out of it, so... Um, yeah. Oh man, I don't remember the name of those compressors. I think it was called Silent Air. Silent Air Compressors. I don't remember the name of the artist. He was in all their ads though, promoting those compressors. And I, that was like, that was like the dream. I remember I was airbrushing at the flea market and I was just saving my guy. I was like saving for one of those. And yeah, I just never ever got around to having one. But to me, like that that would have defined at one point that would have defined success. Is if I would have got one of those silent air compressors, I would have been like, Oh, I made it. I made it. I have the I have the complete setup. <laughs> That's silly. It's silly to think about now, you know, but at that time, like that was my, my, I would look at those compressors and I would drool and I would just be like, oh man, I, why can't I have one of those? And California air tools didn't exist yet. Or, or if they did, they weren't, they weren't easy to get. I don't know. They weren't like the internet was not really a thing yet. So, and yeah, I remember seeing those compressors and I really, 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 really wanted one. And I just always remember, like, I just want one of those really bad. And my setup would be so awesome. People wouldn't even know that, you know, there's a compressor. And, you know, I'd be able to just talk to people normally. And because at the time I was doing the market and, uh, you know, I had a, a, like, just like today, I still have a loud ass compressor that I use. You know, because it's the only thing that I'll actually keep up with painting shirts is a, a nice big, you know, tubby compressor that makes a lot of noise and, and takes a lot of power. So when I used to see those, it was like, oh, oh, I want it. Oh, give me one. And they were expensive. They were like six or seven thousand dollars back then. And I was just like, I, I just I was trying so hard to get it. <laughs> Uh, is this all freehand? Yes, this is all freehand. Um, needle size for airbrushing shoots and, shoes and shirts. Been checking out your videos trying to teach myself. Um, so if you're just trying to learn, because the thing is you're going to have to learn first, right? It's not like you're going to just grab an airbrush and start airbrushing shoes. That's not that really how that happens. But to learn... And then to be able to use it, um, probably a 0.5 millimeter is the best to start on. Terry Hill. Was it Terry Hill? Terry Hill that used to promote those, right? Man, I don't know. I just remember I really, 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 really wanted one. And I was just like, I really, I, that thing would just... I would never have to hear my compressor again, and there's, yeah, that was that was the shit in the magazines back then, man. Yeah, airbrush action went under, so they don't actually make that magazine, so that's why you can't find it anymore. Um, and you just started airbrushing, but it's hard, but you love it. Yeah, that's kind of how I was when I started. Yeah, grab a bunch of shirts and go in. Yeah, I mean, sure, if you want to do it that way. It's going to be more expensive to learn that way, but, I mean, if that's how you want to do it, I'm not going to stop you. More power to you. Yeah, I would recommend a 0.5 for starting and for learning and for 
shirts in general, 0.5 is the best. Because when you're working with shirts, you're not going to reduce paint or anything. So having a, a wider nozzle, and then you're going to want to work at about 35 to 40 PSI. Just a little bit higher than you would on anything else. It was Hill. Okay, yeah. Thank you, King Stoic. All right, right on topper. Glad it helps. So it was Terry Hill, huh, Mark? Yeah, I, I used to just, I wanted one of those so bad, I used to fantasize about it, so. And to this day, I still want to take one of those stupid um, classes, the ones they do in Vegas. Um, the, the what is it? The airbrush getaways. They used to promote those back in the magazine too. And uh, I always wanted to do those. Now I know how to airbrush, so I don't know how. It, I don't know. It wouldn't make much sense, but. As I would just go just to meet everybody because I, I honestly haven't met a lot of those people in the airbrush community. A lot of them, you know, I know through emails and stuff like that or messages on Facebook and stuff like that, but I don't actually know them in person. I haven't yet to meet a lot of them. So... Who knows? Maybe that'll be something in the future. We could work on that. Airbrush lessons are expensive. <laughs> they were great, and yes, you would still get something out of it. Yeah, I guess I would still get something out of it. I just think it'd be more fun than anything. And also kind of funny for whoever is instructing to have me in the, in the class. You know, just kind of just doing my own thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, of course, I would follow their instruction. I'm not going to just be rude. But obviously, I'm probably... <laughs> I'm probably also going to do my own thing at the same time. <laughs> That's so silly, but it's just... I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. I like that was a th like, man, COVID ruined a lot of my things. So I was I was planning to do like a, some kind of get together last last year, like some kind of meet and greet for the channel. Right. And have everybody come out, maybe do some airbrush lessons, you know, so you guys could meet me in person and also kind of, you know, just as a way of getting to hang out and and stuff and um, just to see how many people would come and maybe you know do a whole thing but obviously you can't really do that especially you know there's it's just the state's locked down right now you can't do anything 
and uh, yeah, so like it just ruined everything. My God, the year last year was so weird. Just the way everything played out was really weird. I got everything ready. I spent all the money, bought everything to do the market. Literally got everything ready. Got all the designs. Like literally, I have all the designs. Look, check it out. Watch this. covered in overspray now from sitting obviously in here in the garage but all the designs hats man all the designs for shirts look that one's still clean boom boom they're all here just not being used there's a whole stack of them Usually we have them up on display or we have a book made out of them. Not last year. Last year they just kind of sat there. Another one of those things where I just, I could not foresee the future. And even though I got prepared for something and I was ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, life said, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, not like this. And I was just not, there was nothing again, out of, it was completely out of my control. Nothing I could have done. <sighs> crazy, it's just crazy the way it, 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 everything worked out. I'm starting this year by losing off my cat. It's not good. You were just saying this yesterday. <clears throat> the world's gone mad. No, I don't know about the world going mad. It's just, you know, we're going through some stuff. Now, to me, it's nothing, right? Uh, to me, I'm just like, oh, this stuff's just happening. Maybe for where you are, stuff's in chaos. I don't know, but to me, it's just like, oh, look. Oh, look, I was going to do a thing, and now I can't do that thing. Oh, nothing new. <laughs> it's just like, oh, well, I guess that that's not going to happen now. I, mean, I just have to move on. That's just the way it is. It's been like that for me for life. So, yeah. Very serious. <laughs> An unfortunate series of events. And that pretty much describes my life. Like me trying to make stuff happen and then an unfortunate series of events just <laughs> impedes me from ever doing it. <laughs> it's weird how that works. You might have thought the world's gone mad, but to me, the world's always been mad at me, and it's never had a good, <laughs> it's never had a, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say never, it's, it's had a few good little pats on the back, like, good, good job, but for the most part, life's been like, fuck you. <laughs>
Last year it was a roller coaster of shit, like I said. Started off the year really bad, not knowing what the hell I was gonna do. Then everything turned around. We got the channel going um, strong, right? So it's the channel is bigger, stronger than it's ever been. Uh, like I said earlier, it's mostly important to you guys, but this is like life's been just crazy weird. I don't even know. The difference between 2019 and now. Yeah, exactly, bro. It's weird. Yeah, sometimes you just got to roll with the punches for sure. Let me bring you guys back over to this camera. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just weird. That's just the way life is. Yeah, sometimes you just got to... You know you're getting hit in the left, so you gotta, you know, roll your face to the right. Make sure you, you roll with that punch. Make sure your neck ain't gonna snap. And just take the punch, my guy. She left the dogs out. <sighs> right on, Mark Werner. We'll see you later, man. Now, Mike, your work okay. We can tell. Bob and we, Bob and we. <laughs> uh, your artwork speaks for itself. People just had the time to sit down and watch us all. Yeah probably right and when this whole thing's over people ain't gonna have no more time and I'll just go back to being little old me again Why didn't anyone tell me about this suit? Yeah, exactly. You feel guilty watching this for free? I uh, don't. A lot. Of, all the videos are free. Uh, actually, no, I, I can't say that anymore. There's videos you do have to be a member for to watch, but a lot of them are old and repeated information. But uh, some of those videos do contain some stuff that I don't have in some of the newer videos. But for the most part, a lot of the newer videos are free. Um, if anything, it's just a 30-day early access that you get. Um, and yeah, all 
all the money that I make from the YouTube goes directly back into the YouTube, whether it be buying airbrushes or paints or paying for the electricity here on the shop or the internet here. All of it kind of goes back towards into the same. But yeah, if, if you want to join, I, I very much appreciate it. Every little dollar counts, and it all helps to break more videos like this. So I'm sure everybody else in the community will also appreciate it. Not only that, but like I've said before, when you're a member and I see you drop a comment or a question or anything like that, I take a little more serious and I try to answer it as best as I can because I know that you're, you're more invested. Obviously, you, you've paid some money, but that means you're taking it serious, right? So I try to take you a little more seriously when you join the Skull Squad. And yeah. It's mostly lack of info. A lot of people I know, even artists, barely know anything about airbrushing in Chicago. It's mostly makeup people that don't, that done it. You think this channel will grow too? I mean, it's growing. Uh, the Chicago sh YouTube barely airbrushes and takes them forever to do one set of shoes without prep. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Right on top of That's cool, your daughter knows the channel too, huh? Right on, thank you, thank you, sir. Appreciate all the kind words. You guys are doing a pretty good job of keeping my mind off of Felix, even though I'm painting Felix, so thank you again. For, I really appreciate that. I honestly waited to today because, you know, the last couple days there's no way I could have just been staring at his picture and not been kind of crying my eyes out to be honest with you Yeah, this is this is Felix. <laughs> We're doing a portrait of Felix, um, and this is gonna go uh, in our living room next to some of our other paintings there. So a lot of people don't realize that we have all these paintings out here, and then inside the house we have another set of like a whole another thirty paintings, um, and those are. Some of them are really my wife's, like, stuff that she wanted and we painted just for her. But there's also my paintings, the paintings that I painted for myself. Um, and a few other ones sitting inside. And that's where this guy will go. He'll go right in the middle. This is, this is the size of the one that's in the middle now, but... I think right now uh, it's either Michael Jackson or Prince that sits right in that middle spot. And I think Felix actually looked better there. And then, so yeah, when Spray Gunner, actually when they visited, 
right? They they came in through the front door of the house, so they actually thought that in the living room area, <laughs> they kind of just stopped. They were like with their cameras and stuff, and I just kept walking through the house, and I let the dogs out and stuff, and I looked back, and they're just kind of like standing in that area, and they're just starting to like point their cameras around. And I was like, no, you guys could come back here, like the, the shop's back here, and they were like, oh. <laughs> Like they, they thought that that was it, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not, that's not the, that's not even the good stuff. Like, you <laughs> so yeah. Like, great people, Artem and his wife. They were super friendly, super nice. And uh, yeah, they, they've also. Um, well, it's, it's, I shouldn't say they kind of help in the channel. It's a mutual beneficial partnership deal, you know. The, they created a whole affiliate program just for us. Um, but also at the same time, you know, obviously it's going to help them get more sales on their website and stuff. I'm not sure how much help they really need getting sales, but I know a lot of their stuff's out of stock right now. So if you just bear with them, um, he kind of did tell me that they're have a shipment stuck in customs right now so just bear with them I'm pretty sure in the next week or if not in the next few days a lot of stuff's gonna go back in stock well, at least that's what he told me I don't wanna I don't wanna speak on their behalf or anything but that, that's kinda just my what I know right now about the stock because I did have somebody message me saying they were trying to buy it the airbrush I mentioned, but the, the, there was none in stock, and the, I could recommend them a different one. And I was just like, my honest answer is just wait. If that's the one you like, just wait. Just give it a second. Don't get impatient, you know. And so, yeah, I did ask him. He said, uh, and that's when he told me about the, the shipment that's kind of stuck in customs right now, and they're trying to kind of get that all figured out. As soon as they do, you could expect stock on a lot of this stuff, I'm sure, so. Yeah, super nice guy, super friendly. And I uh, kind of feel bad because uh, after they left here, right, they were going to Texas. And then they made it to Texas and then they got stuck in that winter storm. Oh, man, that, that had to be horrible for him, so him and his family so I, don't, I'm, I hope they did okay during that winter storm um, took 12 hours without prep on that easy ass Nike ice cream or whatever dunks that were popular I was like what the fuck it's flat colors no detail some little shapes, shapes and it took a forever <laughs> um, yeah, they take, uh, so Spray Gunner, like, he's not just, a, like, a business guy. He actually likes airbrushing and stuff, and he's, you know, he's he said, he's like, I'm not really good at it, but I, I appreciate the art and stuff, and, you know, he's tried to learn, so he appreciates it, and he's more of an artist entrepreneur, so I can appreciate that, that he's not just, like, you know, it's not just items for sale like he kind of takes it a little bit personal that like this is airbrushes for the community you know and, and people are going to use it and paint stuff with it and stuff um so yeah right off the bat like he struck me like he cared more about it than just you know the numbers if, if he just cared about the numbers he wouldn't have ever showed up here he wouldn't be doing a 48 state tour he wouldn't be giving out equipment right so yeah, big shout outs to him. Already can tell um, me and him are gonna have a lot, a lot of future together, um, or a bright future together. Hopefully, you know, everything's going good so far, so I don't see that going, going bad anytime soon. As long as he gets that stock in, man. <laughs> He's probably not watching this video, but he did tell me he watches some of the 
live streams and stuff, so. <laughs> It'd be funny if I hear back from him later. Hey, the stock is coming in. <laughs> uh, art is a good way of forgetting about it. Yeah, it is topper. You bought the Iwata HPCS with the Jet Pro compressor. You love it. Yeah, that those are, that's a pretty good setup. Uh, I don't know about any airbrush magazines in the UK, Bob. Um, I don't know which ones. I don't. I'm honestly, I don't know uh, airbrush magazines in general right now. I know that airbrush step by step magazine is a thing. But I don't know where they sell it or what besides on their Facebook page. <laughs> like, I don't think it's available in stores or anything. Like that. I think you have to, like, special order it just directly through them. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know if they ship to the UK or not. It might be something you could get. I don't know. I also know for a place called Airbrush Step by Step Magazine, they haven't given no recognition to this artist that does airbrush step-by-step -step videos every week <laughs> like not gonna throw any salt around but I'm just saying Yeah, like he he was he's pretty honest about everything, man. He came and he told me, you know, about his trip. He came and told me about his company, not just Spray Gunner, but you know the the no name brand that they have going. You know, and he's straight up about it. Like, look, these are not original products or nothing like that. These are products that are being sold in other countries, probably just under a different name. You know, but they're good products, and I just wanted to bring them to people here in the U.S. and you know just release some of that stronghold that honestly Iwata and you know maybe some of the other companies have enjoyed for a little too long because honestly there are some airbrush companies out there that are just making really good products that it's hard it's hard to come into the US market without having a distributor like directly here right so that's kind of all that spray gunner is doing is he's kind of bringing those products in giving them a place to be sold selling them and providing support for them right so i don't i don't see anything wrong with that and if you go on his website you'll notice they don't sell iwata airbrushes and there's a very good reason for that i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say or not but it's almost say is there's a very good reason for that and yeah they do set, resell Iwata airbrushes that they get in for trade, but they don't actually sell Iwata airbrushes directly. And you guys could ask him. I'll let him answer that question, and that'll actually give you a reason to go right now on YouTube, type in Spray Gunner, hop into the chat, up into the search bar, go to his channel, and drop in a comment and ask him why he doesn't sell I want to airbrushes and hopefully he's honest with you like he was with me and he tells you that you know whatever the reason is <laughs> how can a magazine teach me like this though that yeah that, that's a good question I, I can't answer that question I learned out of a book so <laughs> By the time I learned that Airbrush, Mag Mag Airbrush Action Magazine was a thing, I kind of already knew how to do dagger strokes. And, you know, by then I was just kind of like, I, know, I was getting more into it, I guess. And so I never even thought about looking for a magazine until I was already kind of 
a little bit into it, a little bit knee deep, as you say. And then it was just interesting, and then seeing the little tutorials that they had in there and stuff, it was, it was fun. I wish it was still around, honestly. I still think it makes no sense they weren't able to just go digital and make all that ad revenue that they were making from the magazine and just make it off of a website. I don't know. I don't know how hard that is to transfer over, but it seems like it had been pretty easy to do, my guy. Who doesn't like you, dude? <laughs> they don't like me now because of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can keep watching me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. No, obviously, you can keep watching me, and I would recommend you just watch a, a bunch of artists. There's, I'm not the only artist. Um, I would be careful of who you watch. There's a lot of artists nowadays that have YouTube channels and stuff like that, but. Um, that I know that have not actually worked in the field and like or worked at an airbrush store or don't actually do paintings for customers, right? A lot of them are just, again, painting for the camera. Um, and that's, well, that's something that's kind of a thing nowadays. And some of them are pretty talented. Like, not going to lie, they do make nice paintings. But like Dennis saying, when, when you're a master of your craft, it shouldn't take you... 200 hours you know unless you're working on something very big very detailed but like he says you know just a pair of shoes and all they're doing is some colors on them nothing you know there's no portraits or nothing like that and it takes them you know a, a long time i'm not even going to say the amount of time dennis said because i don't even believe it <laughs> but i know there are artists like that you know and uh yeah but there's a lot of us that, you know, we've been working forever. And maybe some of our tips would be useful. And there's a lot of guys that see something on one channel and then just try to apply it to everything. One of the things that's become a thing lately that I've seen um, kind of spread around a little bit is sanding on shoes. I don't know where this originated or why, but shoes, leather is porous, right? It means it, it absorbs. So when you spray paint on it, literally some of the paint absorbs into the fabric, into the leather. It's not necessary to sand it. Not only that, if you were anywhere where people care about shoes, and say somebody brought you in some Air Force Ones, right, which are kind of hard to get now, especially on specific sizes. And they see you literally on purpose scuff up their shoes, you're going to have issues. Like, <laughs> you're going to have issues. <laughs> uh, so I don't know where that really uh, started or why, but most leather is porous. You could lay paint on it, it'll stick. Createx literally sticks to most stuff without you even having to clean it. But if most shoes, if you just run a nice degreaser, wash them off real quick, let them dry, and then paint them, you don't need to do any sanding. And yeah, it's it just like the people that say that you can paint on the leather. You know how many people just told me they could paint on leather? But none of them could actually prove it, right? So they say, oh yeah, you could paint on the leather. Blah, blah. Then I say, okay, we'll do it, and then walk around with the shoe and post a picture of your shoe, or post a video of how you do it, and then post a video of you walking around and see how well it lasts, right? Then it's crickets. Then you don't see anybody comment or follow up on that ever, because the truth is it doesn't. It doesn't hold up. You can't paint on rubber. Rubber will literally, it just doesn't hold paint. Um, 
so you you can paint on it for sure but like if for me right when I'm running a store and a customer brings in a pair of shoes and they say hey I want the shoes I want this on it and this I know in my mind that customer is gonna walk on those shoes he's not buying them to just put up on a shelf or nothing like that he's buying them he's gonna wear them tonight and he wants them to stay right he wants that design to be on there in the morning he doesn't want them to get scuffed nothing like that so you know I in my you know I just in my right mind I can't charge somebody for something and not be able to stand behind it when they bring it back and they go hey that paint fell off blah 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 and then I have to sit there and be like no it's okay to paint on rubber like the customer doesn't want to hear that right the customer is just like no dude it came off uh, what are we gonna do about this and that's why I don't tell people to paint on the rubber same reason I would tell you not to send on somebody's shoes like you're just not gonna it's not gonna produce what you want that's all I'm saying you know, now certain shoes are plastic I guess scuffing up the plastic probably wouldn't hurt um, but yeah most shoes leather you know nice shoes to be painted are leather so I don't know. that's just been my experience my guy <laughs> yeah dude just you just all you gotta do is clean them off you, you don't have to do anything crazy just gotta degrease the shoes get any oil off of them and go on about your biz but yeah, I've seen quite a few videos where people are sanding the shoes and it's just, it worries the fuck out of me. And then I see a lot of videos where people are painting the rubber sole and, and then they show the, the finished shot, you know, or the video of the, sh the shoe, but nobody's wearing the shoe, right? It's just sitting on a shelf or sitting on their table and they're just rotating the camera around the shoe, which makes a really cool effect for a video, no lie, you know, but that's not what we're here to do. Like, if you're here to paint shoes, you better be able to stand behind that shoe and somebody wearing it and, you know, going through the whole shebang of that shoe. It's not just, I created a piece of art, it's gonna sit on a shelf. Like, if that's what you're doing, that's fine. But you should make it clear that that shoe is a piece of art and not meant to be worn anymore. Right, because a lot of people don't understand that. When you make a video on how to airbrush shoes, people are going to assume that that shoe is good to just wear it and everything. And that's how my video is based. My videos on shoes are based. And you're talking about people wearing their shoes to the club, wearing them out, people stepping on their shit, coming back and being like, oh yeah, that shoe is still good, you know, I really liked them. You know, but like, yeah, some of the stuff I see now is like, it's crazy. It's crazy. trying to rag on anybody specific I don't know I like I said I don't know where that information originated from or anything like that I just know that some people better be careful on who they watch um, and what kind of advice they follow because they might, <laughs> like you might just end up ruining a good pair of shoes or ruining a shirt or a jacket or whatever it is you're trying to paint and because you followed some real unrealistic expectation you might end up you know doing something you you're not happy with or doing it to somebody else this is the same reason I tell people to use createx paint you know how many people in the comments want to fight me? No, on shoes you should use this paint. And this paint is better. And this is like, yo. Like, 20 years of painting on shoes. 
that paint has three years of existing. Now look, I'm not gonna say that paint's no good, but I'm just gonna tell you the Createx paint works great. And it does fine and it sticks and you ain't gotta do nothing special and I could stand behind it, like right? And they stand behind it and they, you know. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I just, I'm just the guy providing the information. That's all it is. You take it, you leave it. You want to go follow somebody else's advice? That's fine. I'm just telling you, be careful. But then there's other artists that are really good, do awesome job explaining stuff and provide really good videos. Um, that are not only entertaining, but some of them are really informative and they know their stuff. And one of the people that comes right off to the top of my head is Steve Leahy and he does the live streams over on Facebook. Everybody knows about the live streams, but I honestly think he deserves more subs on his YouTube channel. Um, and he kind of stays in his lane, right? He knows like I airbrush this stuff. He doesn't start just trying to make videos about something else. And that's a good sign. And what he does is amazing. Like his artwork is amazing. Little micro, micro miniature paintings. Like he's, he's an amazing artist that deserves more subs. So. All I gotta say is be careful. And if somehow in that rant your feelings got hurt, it's probably because I'm talking about you. <laughs> oh, man. All righty. I think Mr. Felix is looking pretty dang good. Pretty darn good. I just wanna. All right, let's do his nose, and then we could come back in with the white. <clears throat> but yeah, even when I worked as an artist, right? So like. Um, when I moved to Houston, right, like I knew I knew how to airbrush. I was not, nothing like that. But when I went into the airbrush store, um, you know, I was told other airbrush artists worked there and that I'd have to like, you know, kind of wait my turn for, for like the, the painting that came in, like they're kind of doing an order. So I did as I would for work, man. I got ready in the morning and went and sat at the store. Come to find out all the other artists didn't just come in. They just came in whenever they wanted, did whatever they wanted and just took the jobs that they wanted and then got paid and would leave, right? But there was no like, Sleek was the only one that was kind of dedicated to the store and actually like f tried to fulfill all the orders. So that's what I did. I just showed up the first day and started trying to help him fulfill all the orders that were kind of just backlogged. Because these artists were good, right? There's artists that were good, but um, they were slow, man. You know, you had some of them taking like projects home and then bringing them back, you know, a month later or weeks later, stuff like that. And, you know, it was just taking way too long or they would go in and only paint, you know, maybe one, one thing, maybe two things and then they would bounce, right? Like they would just come and get their money for the day and then leave. And when I showed up, I was just like, nah, bro, this rack of stuff 
we got to paint it all. Like there has to be a hundred percent satisfied customers. Like there's, you can't pick and choose who gets something painted and who doesn't. Like everybody gets something painted. And that's kind of, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, the, the other airbrush artists were not very happy with me. Because I literally just went in, in the morning, mall opens, I was there, mall closed, I was there. And the whole day, I was painting, bro. And it's like, they were acting like if I was taking away their lunch, right? But it's just like, that wasn't even their lunch. That was food that was literally about to rot away in the fridge. Nobody been touching it. You know what I'm saying? And they could have ate it at any time, and they just chose not to. And that was always weird to me, like, right, like, there's stuff to paint, but there's nobody painting it. Why? I'm talking about there was, like, a good month's long worth of work where people would come in, drop stuff off, they would pay, and then they'd be like, yeah, take, just take your time, I'll be back. Right? Or give me a call when it's finished. And it's just like, man. So yeah, when I got to Houston, I, I did a lot of work and, and it was a lot of fun while I was there, but I just, just wasn't for me. That's all I'm gonna say, you know. Doing a prank video where I spray tan my missus with brown gloss paint. <laughs> what? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> top for you. <laughs> what is that, bro? Uh. Thank you, thank you, though. Yeah, that's the best way, honestly, to learn, um, especially because, like, on pots, I can't imagine there's. Uh, many videos or anything kind of explaining really what to do on pots so yeah I commend you for figuring it out for one and then two executing it because like I said I've seen a lot of people just kind of give up Oh man, it looks just like him, bro. All he has to do is a little bit of the white and he's gonna, it looks spot on. up some white and then we'll be ready to spray some clear we're gonna spray some 4050 and I think I'm gonna do a uh, matte because uh, I don't want glare I don't like the glare on my paintings um, you guys are probably like what the hell are you talking about glare so on canvas when you spray the 4050 the gloss, right, it becomes like this painting over here, watch, I'll show you. 
See that? See that glare? See how it's on one camera and not the other one? And you can only really get rid of it by doing like some, you know, making sure the light's not hitting it directly. But when the light hits it like this, bro, it's like, fuck. So I kind of want to do matte on, on Felix so that he kind of always sticks out. So thank you guys all for hanging out with me today. It really helps just having you guys. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys and all the support. And I'm really glad you guys get like the videos and get information out of them and, and everything. But the benefits go both ways. And it's just sometimes nice to just know that you guys are there, know you guys care and stuff. And yeah. Ever since last year, man, you guys have not let me down. You guys have been pretty good. Pretty good. Fingers crossed. I better knock on wood. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to throw some illustration opaque white. I've been using the illustration paints on this, um, but there's something that's about to drop that you guys are going to be probably excited to hear about and I've been let in on the release but not it's not yet so once they actually drop I'll have them here on the channel for you guys to check out but doing a video about it and everything all right so let's just start with his eyes real quick Get that money though, Dennis, man. It's good that you've been able to stay busy, stay working. Thank you, thank you, Topper.
<laughs> How two white dots in his eyes make the difference, huh? That's funny. Hell yeah, man. You get that, Dennis. Hell yeah. Yeah, Dennis is talking about his real job, though. His, his 9 to 5 or, or whatever his schedule is. You know what I mean. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Eight to eight. Dang, son. You're getting that overtime. <laughs> Off work with an injury? Yeah, I feel you there, bro. I just took my ibuprofen earlier. You know, my hip's been getting better. I've been trying to work at it. And lately, I've been trying to, you know, just exercise more and stuff. But it seems like every time I'm busted, just I feel like I could break away from my injury. It fucking it just ends up kicking my ass. Like I was doing really good with weights and stuff there for a minute, and you know, doing the the treadmill and stuff. And then one day, it just woke up, my hips out of place, and I can't. I just couldn't seem to pop it in that whole day, and it's been hard, man. You know, they, they say I got to build up my, like, my ab muscles, right? My core. <clears throat> and uh, everywhere on my body, bro, like my arms, there's no fat, bro. I'm, like, good, sturdy, solid. My legs, I'm solid. My chest, I'm solid. But then it comes to my core. And, bro, I'm squishy, squishy, and I don't know what it is. And I do sit-ups, and I could do running, and all this stuff and it just doesn't seem to change anything around my core and I don't know bro I'm like at the I'm on my wits end on on how to like actually get myself better you know got back from getting vaccination what how did you get a vaccine too what the hell you <laughs> you've been swatting up and airbrushing for a few weeks you've been my go-to right on thank you anthony good luck to you sir airbrushing i think you're the one that messaged me um i'm dodging the vax until everyone else has tried it <laughs> Two blown discs and neck and back. Woo, boy. Yeah, so I have a herniated disc, but it, that that's not the cause of all my pain. The problem is that is it gets compounded when my hip pops out of place and my muscles try to 
keep compensating for the herniated disc and everything all together. And literally I have like where my spine is on my back, my muscles on my spine work so hard that I have like an indention going down the middle of my back, like a heavy indention. But then on the sides of my back and going around towards my core, it's, it's squishy, bro. Like my body is hella awkward right now. I don't even know how to describe it. And I can't seem to do anything about it. Like everything I seem to do doesn't help. So I just keep doing it and doing it and you know. Doctor wasn't lying when I asked, you know, how long I gotta do this for? He said, no, this is just, you gotta just exercise from now on. He wasn't lying, bro. Cause I guess I just got to exercise from now. <laughs> I I just, I guess I took it for granted. I was in sports in school and stuff. And I probably should have just kept working out when I, even after school. Dietitian, huh? I might have to look into that. Pilates strengthens the core. Yeah, I actually, I do like yoga with my daughter and stuff, so we do a lot of work. Keep flexing your butt cheeks. Ugh. So I was told to just keep my core flexed as I'm standing, which I try to do. I try to, every time I remember, I try to keep my core flexed and stuff like that, but my hip still pops out of place. I still feel like I'm a ball of jelly in certain parts. I don't know, man. Maybe I just need to keep at it for a long time.
And so this is a good one to show too, that you could do the white highlights like this on the whiskers and stuff. And I feel like these whiskers look a lot more natural as opposed to if you were doing like a, a scratch board or something like that, where people scratch off the paint to try to get the, you know, the, the highlights in. I feel sometimes those highlights look super unnatural. And like here on this picture, his whiskers almost kind of blend in with his fur and stuff. They don't, they're not really like just crazy bright white, you know, things. So yeah, it's possible to get those white highlights in completely freehand. You don't need to always just result to some kind of weird technique. Not only that, but I've explained a lot of times that not every technique transfers to every medium. So like if you get used to too much scratching and stuff, But then, you know, maybe a customer brings you some shoes or something and you're trying to paint some shoes. You obviously ain't gonna be able to scratch on them shoes to get the paint off. Like, that's not the way that works. If somebody brings you a vehicle, you're not gonna start putting scratches onto the vehicle to try to get paint off. That's also not how that works. Sometimes it's just better to just use your skill and some paint you know, do it the best you can. Even if you have to do them one by one like this, and you have to control your finger, and get every single highlight in there, then that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do, man. He looks freaking spot on. I don't think I could have got him in any, any better. The eyes, the fur, the patterns on the fur, the colors. I don't think I could have got him any better. It's my buddy all over again. Yeah, Topper, you, you might not want to talk about a uh, pandemic being uh, false or anything like that around here, bro. Around here, it's very real. Uh, Dennis has lost his mother-in-law to the COVID virus, um, and quite a few people have gotten sick. And actually, I don't know what Felix died of, and we know animals could catch COVID as well. Um, and we, yeah, like, this is not the place for that. And like, there's no way we could deny it at this point. It's just so many deaths, bro. And I'd just rather people be safe until there's nobody dying as opposed to not. Now, if you have some concrete evidence to prove that, you know, the virus is not real, like if you're a scientist and you can prove to me that the virus is not real, please, by all means, I would like to see a video or something on that. But if you're just, you know, he said, she said type thing, I'm, I'm, I'm really not interested because people around here have lost their lives to it. Um, nobody in my family directly, but people that are related to, uh, you know, some of my relatives and stuff have died um, in, in big numbers too. One certain family that's tied to my family has lost about 15 people due to the virus. And 
And like, even though I'm glad that I, I'm, I'm probably sure I've caught it by now and I'm glad that I survived it and, and it doesn't affect me. I know that there's a lot of people out there that, you know, like Heather that was in here earlier that has a lung disease or, you know, Dennis that lost his mother-in-law. To them, it's very, very real. You know. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the thing is that, you know, you can't compare like 500,000 deaths to maybe, you know, 50 or 60,000 deaths that might have happened. Um, the, the numbers are just way, way bigger, right? So, no doubt people die all the time. But if we could stop senseless death by just being cleaner and safer, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't. Same reason why, you know, you would use an atomic bomb to maybe stop future conflict or, you know, scare a country into, you know, just stop future bloodshed. You use that one big bomb and, and try to, you know, contain things that way. That's the same thing. You know, you try to contain things and try to keep it real, but just letting it grow wild, letting the wildfire go, it's probably also not the way to go. It's just my thought, bro. We already said my lungs is not, you can hear it in my voice and everything. My lungs is not the best. I've been breathing paint for 20 years, my guy. Now I'm painting with not so much overspray, but there's been times when, you know, we've been spraying up a storm. So I could appreciate, I know what you're saying, but it's just the same time, it's like, it's not that, it's not that little, you know, it's pretty big. I don't know. That's all I'm going to say about that. I wish it was over. I wish it was gone. Believe me, it's hurt me, my business, everything. Like I said, that whole year, last year, every single plan I had was turned on its head. Plans that I talked about here on the channel, people were excited about. And then again, it's completely out of my control due to the virus. I mean, if it wasn't that serious, they wouldn't be closing all the things down. And like, I honestly, I, I do a lot of private events for, what am I gonna say here? I don't wanna say rich people, but people that are well off you know and they were among the first to cancel events like parties anything like that where large gatherings were happening like they knew ahead of time um, way before the news media was ever saying to cancel anything a lot of events that I had lined up through the year got canceled bar mitzvahs private parties weddings stuff like that was all gone like within a mat like from February to the end of March everything had been canceled and then by then they were starting to put in lockdowns in place and all that and it's just by then it was over like <laughs> yeah so i don't know man i just know the rich will tell you one thing and do something on the other side so be careful with that <clears throat> Yeah, in the UK, man, that, that's not a big deal. Like, I think the UK was, they did, you guys did pretty good on the lockdowns and stuff. Here in the US, it's like a really divided thing. Like people are locking down in some spots and in other places there is no real restrictions. And then you have the people themselves and in some areas, even though there's a lockdown, people are like, my freedom, you know, and they want to walk around with no mask and, you know, cough in and, and rallies and all this other bullshit you know just whereas you guys i know from a fact you guys literally locked everything down this is a war on the poor let's keep it a bit real the thing is that if you 
It's a revolving circle, right? So the rich need the poor because the poor spend the money on the rich. And so if the poor don't have any money to spend, the rich also suffer. So it's a revolving circle. Uh, we're all in this together, whether you're rich or poor or not. At the end of the day, we all survive off of each other. And that's what I think we all need to keep in mind. And a lot of people forget that even that person that works at McDonald's serving you the burger, he's serving you. And at the end of the day, you need to pay him that you need to eat. And it's a revolving circle, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Just just like that, I don't want to get all political. It's just about people, really, and I care about everybody, whether it be you, the next guy, or anything like that. And I hate any of you to get sick or tell me you got sick. You know, that's just not going to happen, especially, like, if losing my cat. Like, I'm not happy about losing my cat, bro. Um, it's very sad, so same would be if your family lost you or if you lost your mother or anything like that and that's kind of all i'm all i'm saying is i'd rather keep all y'all safe instead of risk it and have some of y'all die just because you know whatever reason uh, that's just how i look at it the brits are rebelling the media is hiding it I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't live in the UK, so I don't know. All I know is here in the US, stuff seems to be simmering down. Um, you got a whole bunch of the. the, the I I don't even gonna call them Republicans because at this point they ain't even Republicans. I'm gonna say that the Trump people, you know, still trying to wild out, but everything else has gone back to normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Republicans are betting from seven years of anti-intellectualism. Yep, I, I'm a big, I'm a big, big supporter of we should take away the no child gets left behind law. I think that fucked a lot of people over, because now you have people out there walking around where their parents just made an excuse the whole time, and that person never learned. Not only did they rob them of being able to learn and fend for themselves, not just financially right because a lot of people can get a job and pay their bills that's not a big deal but being able to think for yourself is, is another big thing and i think there's a lot of people that just are out there and don't know how to think for themselves so they just follow whatever they're told and so like i i watch some news right but i don't i don't listen to the opinions on the news there's a difference in that they can report something that happens and then they talk about it, right? Well, I listen to the report of what happened, but I don't, I don't really care about what the reporter says about whatever, you know, I don't care about their opinion. I can make my own opinion. I just need to know what happened. And that's, that's all it is. And if people are dying, I don't care if somebody says, you know, they're dying because of this reason or that reason. I just know people are dying and we should probably stop people from dying. That's all I really care about at the end, right? So yeah, thank you, Aaron Reynolds. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show that comment, that last one. So yeah. Anyway, thank you, Stephen Ward. Yeah, like I'm not gonna get into the whole news media thing. Like, all I know is I just wish the news would just go back to just reporting and not giving every opinion about everything or having other people get on there and say their opinions. Just get on and tell me the news. What happened? And that's it. That's all I want to know. I can make my own assumptions. I can make my own opinions. I just need you to tell me what the fuck happened. That's it. You know, so I just wish the news would go back to that, to just being the news. But nowadays it's like the news and opinions. And then there's places where it's not even news about anymore it's just you know opinions galore some guys opinions galore anyway i'm done i'm done felix is done and i think yeah i think i'm gonna let him dry up for a little bit not that he's wet or anything but i'm gonna let him dry i'm gonna come back out here lay some clear coat on him and then take him inside i'm also kind of hungry so i'm gonna go get myself something to eat and then come back up and and do that so yeah thank you guys again all for watching um i hope you guys are all staying safe you guys all just doing good thank you guys again for the support today it was me it means a lot to me that you guys came out and just chatted for a little bit just hung out um 
and yeah i'm glad i was able to get this painting done and so it's one for me so it's good <laughs> So yeah, I, I hope all you guys um, are doing good. I hope all you guys have happy painting out there. I know we kind of were all over the place with today. Um, but that's kind of how it's been for me for the last few days, so. <sighs> anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, everybody. Um, happy painting again. We'll see you guys on Thursday. We'll be back with another How To Airbrush. Later, everybody. Yo, Aaron Reynolds with the five Canadian dollars. Thank you, thank you, sir. I, I'm, I'm kind of sad you waited to the very end, but thank you, thank you, much appreciated. I'm very glad the tutorials helped. Um, I wish you the best of luck, sir. And I hope you join the Discord and post up some of your work so we can check it out. All right, all right, now I'm out of here. <laughs> Later, guys.